Hello again, everyone. Michael here with Felicity. November 8033 Fox. A Cessna flight training device that I built at home. Today's Monday, the 10th of April, 2023. I hope you are doing well, wherever you may be around the world. Today, I would like to talk a bit about in-flight emergency procedures. And Dreamnid, hello, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Happy Monday to you. Um, recently passed our private pilot written exam and our check ride is imminent in roughly six weeks or so. Uh, and uh, six weeks is imminent when uh, this is a pursuit of over 10 years now. So one thing that I will openly admit that I kind of have been neglecting on studying is in-flight emergency procedures and what to do during an engine out, engine fire, things of that sort. Um, so that's what I want to discuss this evening. What I've got here is a, well this is a checkmate checklist uh, from Checkmate Aviation, but it is specifically for the aircraft that we're flying and after I compared everything to the POH, um, I'm going to go ahead and use that as our reference and then what I'm going to do is bring that in and um, we can kind of go over it together that's what I want uh, power loss immediately after takeoff with no restart this is probably one of the most um, important ones that I should probably know and probably one of the most um, difficult to get back to the airport um, from and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute first thing and my CFI has, has drilled this into me is just always fly the airplane first and for me that's going to be established best glide The caveat to this evening's simulations versus what could possibly happen out there in the real world is that I am initiating, I'm going to be initiating these failures, so I'm, I'm going to kind of have that mental mindset. Uh, um, so there's not going to be what I'll call that human factor um, per se, not a delayed reaction time. I've yet to figure out how to make explain randomize um, well I might look at it again in X plane 12 I, I tried to look at it in X plane 11 I couldn't quite figure it out if we can set specific failures um, to happen at a specific point we're, we're gonna do that um, and then I don't have to necessarily worry about implementing that failure um, but as we go down here we can kind of see um, everything starts off with best glide best glide best glide um, so power loss immediately after takeoff we're gonna find best glide and in our airplane that's gonna be 80 miles per hour and I have to say 80 miles per hour because that's the only thing I can see in the airplane I fly in real life I can't see that 70 knots because it's a mile per hour instrument there is a knots indication there but it's not first glance you really kind of have to look at the small numbers to see that uh, we're going to turn our fuel selector to off and mixture full lean and flaps all the way down I'm assuming that's going to help maintain some lift um, and then um, master and magnetos to off and then we're also going to unlatch our doors and the reason we do that is we have this aluminum airframe that can has very good potential to get mangled and bent up upon a hard impact we want to make sure that we can exit the aircraft um, what I would call part of securing the plane as we're going down uh, let's something that we do at the very last minute um, all right best glide fuel selector to off mixture to lean um, flaps down mags to off 
That's if we have a power loss immediately after takeoff and we don't get the engine to restart. Best glide, fuel selector off, mixture to lean, flaps down, mags to off. Okay. So we're not going to put our flaps in until we know we can until we know we need them. How about that? Because we don't want to bleed off airspeed. Um, while it may give us some lift, we don't want to lose airspeed. Okay. So I may even take a marker and kind of write in there altitude more. Okay, altitude. In-flight power loss, um, best glide again, car peats going on, and we need to um, know where our wind is from. Pick a landing site, and then make sure to full rich. Uh, check the fuel, make sure primer's in and locked, and check the mags, and make sure master's on. And then we're going to attempt to restart. And I feel like there's an acronym for that somewhere, and off the top of my head I don't remember what the acronym is, but I think there's an acronym for that. It's not GUMPS, it's something else. Carpeat on. Also supplies alternate air, okay. I guess that would make sense. It kind of answers my question as to why a carpeat would go on. So power loss in flight, we are going to attempt to restart our engine. Then if no restart and time permits, so if the time allows, we'll go through this checklist. Uh, again, here's best glide. Got to find that best glide. Um, that, that's that's going to keep us at a safe airspeed the longest. Carp heat on would eliminate carp icing as a possibility. Understood and makes sense, especially if you've got low idle um, or no idle even. Um, but yeah, best glide is what I was doing with my little model here. That's that's just gonna kind of give us the. The safest airspeed with the least amount of altitude loss um, with our specific aircraft. Sparky Pilot, hello, welcome. Um, thank you for coming in. And yes, um, a full, full admittingly, this is one area that I've been kind of neglecting. Um, so it's something that I do need to brush up on and know. Um, check ride is probably in about six weeks or so. Thursday night, I'm finishing up the night requirements um, with a nighttime cross country and some landings. So that will satisfy the nighttime requirements. And then if all goes well, we'll get the check ride scheduled and then just use that time in between to build and establish some proficiency. Okay, um, if no restart in time permits, we're going to get that best glide. Squawk 7700. Declare an emergency, either whoever we're contacting or on Unicom or on Guard. Uh, so if we're, uh, we, it's highly, highly unlikely we'd ever be uh, talking to a center, um, especially, especially uh, and the 172 I fly, uh, it's not IFR equipped or anything. Um, but whoever we're in contact with is who we'll declare that emergency on. 
Uh, fuel selector off, seat belts and harnesses. The 172 that I fly um, did just install some shoulder harnesses and it's they're kind of cumbersome but once you're latched in they, they're all right you know, and I just kind of keep them loose and then if that time comes you know we'll just tighten them up um, but uh seat belts and harnesses flaps as needed dream mid here it is right here in bold, in bold letters uh, full flaps when field is assured unlatched doors and again that's in case our airframe gets mangled we want to be able to get those doors open electrical fire in flight this is if our radios catch on fire or you know something behind the panel catches on fire um, all electrical devices and master off we're going to keep the magnetos on because the mag why the magnetos are controlling our engine. Okay, your the master is essentially your your battery power to your electrical devices and your starter and that's essentially about it electrical wise. So, we'll leave our mags on, keep that engine running, turn that master switch off. That's essentially going to kill the current to um, all the electrical systems on the aircraft there. If the fire goes out, basically meaning if that master switch did interrupt that circuit and um, kill all that current and the fire goes out um, let's see turn it back on if and only critical and then open any vents that are in the aircraft to get smoke out uh, then one essential electrical device at a time so what I'm gonna okay all electrical okay so the and I think I would probably at that point start with my lights, especially the beacon. Um, beacon and strobes is probably the first I would start with as far as electrical devices. Uh, let's see. Then one essential electrical device at a time and reset the circuit breaker only if critical. Which makes sense because you may not know what device, you know, you could have one circuit breaker that's protecting multiple, you know, pieces of equipment on the aircraft and you don't know exactly which one may have caused the electrical fire. So that makes sense. And then important one here, engine fire in flight. Make sure it's going to go to full lean and naturally that's going to cut the fuel. Uh, fuel selected off is also cutting the fuel. Master switch to off, cabin heat and air off. Except for the overhead vents, which our aircraft is not equipped with. Airspeed 120 or as needed to extinguish and then land as soon as possible. So they're using that air to actually, you know, across the across the engine, across the cowling to extinguish that fire engine fire during start another important one that I'm sure that we're gonna need to know uh, continue cranking the engine which I guess I can kinda understand the, hear the theory behind it is that continuously cranking it might help to extinguish that but then my logic always is also tell, is, tell, is telling me okay we are also overworking that electrical starter which could also get hot um, if it does start run it a few seconds shut down and inspect So it doesn't really specify how long you should or should not continue cranking the engine if you do notice a fire. I would imagine if it starts in what I would call a reasonable time. Um, if it doesn't start, uh, cut the fuel mixture to off. Let me grab the POH for 98 uniform. We'll take a look at that. I 
actually was fortunate enough to find a PDF of the uh, POH for the 172 Foxtrot. So let's see if that's actually in here. Let's see. Emergency procedures. I wouldn't be surprised if this was, you know, published back in the day before they had emergency procedures. Okay, airspeed limitations, maneuvers, power recovery techniques, short field, soft field landings, time data, taxiing. Absolutely nothing in here about emergency procedures. Okay. Good to know. I agree. Um, I still have a POH for the 172 November that I flew um, initially. But this one is a bit older, and I wanted something a bit more accurate for the Foxtrot model. Um, okay, so where were we at here? Engine fire during start. Uh, we were discussing... Oh, I was getting cut off there. Weird. Okay, let's try that. Um, where were we? No start, idle mixture cut off and fuel selected off. Um, throttle is full open. Continue cranking engine a few more seconds. I'm going to turn master and mags to off and then evacuate the aircraft. Icing. We have experienced icing a few times in our simulator, and I am not, uh, you know, all joking aside, ice can kill you before you can even realize it sometimes. I can only say that, you know, I can I recognize the signs in X plane. So now that I recognize the signs in X plane, I'm familiar enough to know how to, um, you know, stop the accumulation and or get out of that area um, or get down onto the ground. Uh, but uh, for real world purposes, I'm gonna connect up, get our pedo heat on, and our pedo tube is what now it is ram air pressure for our airspeed indicator. So, if that were to freeze over, we would lose airspeed. Carb heat would go on. And cabin heat and defrost to maximum. I'm assuming that's going to help keep the windshield from freezing over, so you can maintain visibility. Strongly consider a 180 degree turn. Get out of there. Do whatever you need to do. Stop that ice from forming. Get out of that accumulation. Go higher, you might find warmer air. Go lower, you might not get out of the ice, depending on how far that, you know, uh, visible moisture is. Uh, sometimes you can find warmer air and, and climb out of it. But either way, whatever you gotta do is stop that accumulation. Um, aircraft that are FICI certified 
most of them are just certified just enough to get through it not to maintain an icing condition just to they're, they're certified enough just to fly through it and get out of there uh, attain higher or lower altitude okay we were just talking about that increase engine speed and then flaps are not recommended for landing and I can only assume ice if it has collected on the flaps is going to disrupt the shape of you know that airfoil and cause some cause some unnecessary problems <clears throat> uh, and then there's some other miscellaneous stuff about overcharging Okay, so if you're overcharging, it's wanting you to stop the flight as soon as possible. The same with insufficient charge. Uh, emergency frequency, 121.5. Well, I guess I've never really noticed the light signals on the checklist here. And I suppose I ought to fill this out. Every plane has a different empty weight and useful load. Um, so we're in a Foxtrot model so we're gonna fill those boxes out and boxes out later once I look them up in the, in the uh, POH. Hey Drippy, hello, welcome on in. Hope you're doing well. Just uh, doing a little bit of uh, um, discussion about some emergency procedures and, and what to do should certain um, things happen um, with my rear wheel check ride coming up this is some stuff that I wanted to kind of brush up on you're right you're right um, which is um, in the aircraft so I have to dig that out and get that dream mid. I'm glad you called me out on that one. Yeah, wait, because weight and balance is in the aircraft. Okay. Where were we? Um, tabletop Android, hello, welcome on in. Hope you're doing well. Okay. This evening, we're going to focus on engine failures. Um, I want to attempt one at a 500 AGL. I want to attempt one maybe midfield, downwind. And then I would like to attempt one at cruising altitude. And I'll say cruising altitude around here when I'm flying VFR. It's probably 3,000, well, anywhere between 3,500 to 5,500 when I fly around here. So that's what I want to try and do. Um, get that best glide and just see what we can do about you know, about getting our airplane safely back down onto the ground. We are currently at my home airport, Morrow County. This is going to be the best airport for me to practice this at because this is the where I fly out of all the time. Um, so let's bring up an aerial view of my lovely little airport here. 70% of the time I'm using runway 28. Most of our winds come from the west. So 70% of the time I'm using runway 28. And Dreamnid, I am probably not doing the check ride out of 4i9er. I'm probably going to go to OSU for that. Um, cause that's where she's at. That's where I started training out of. Um, 
I wish you could come up here if I paid for gas. It must be a DPE thing. Um, but I think I'm just going to fly down there. Um, and get it taken care of down there. Either, either way, it's going to cost me money. So. <clears throat> um, but if we uh, runway 28, we've got some options. M. Stein, hello, my friend. Welcome. Um, so we do have some options for runway 28. Runway 10, we have options, but there are fewer options. Runway 28, and if we lose it like immediately after takeoff, like immediately, I, I we can put it down in this field right here. Um, we can just kind of dog leg over and set it down right there. You know, if, if we're, you know, 500 feet, you know, we're, you know, over this way some, and we have options over here. There's, there's fields. Um, however, runway 10, immediately after departure, I have State Route 42. State Route 42 is a busy interstate, or not interstate, but state route, and, um, and you've got residential houses. I don't have a whole lot of options for immediately after takeoff at runway 10. If we're 500, 600 AGL, you know, we've got some options, but they're, they're very, very limited. We don't have as much um, a east to west uh, field as we do west of the airport. Um, Dream Nade, very good point. Um, it has to be OSU, and it has to be Christine as my DPE. And the re the reason is, you know, this is a thing that's been going on. It's a long time thing I've been pursuing. Um, my first CFI was. Uh, uh, trained by Christine, who's going to be my DPE. So let's see if we can get you to follow along here. My initial CFI, all right, his name was Eric. I initially trained with Eric at Bolton, TZR. Okay. Eric was trained by Christine, who was his CFI, okay, who is now the DPE, okay. Eric, my first CFI, unfortunately, passed away in a plane crash while on a business trip flying to Indiana. Um, he was put in a broken plane, unfortunately. Excellent pilot. Just, uh, things happen, I guess. Um, so, Christine uh, became my CFI at OSU. And I trained at OSU for quite a while. Um, so when I did my first solo, we went to Bolton and did the solo there. Um, so that was the best way her and I decided that we could honor Eric. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Christine and I were training together, um, and then as life has it, you know, kind of ran out of money, but her and I never really lost touch. Um, in, in hindsight, well, we'll get to in, hind in hindsight, but, um, Things just never really fell into place because up here in Mount Gilead, where I'm at, the closest uh, training was essentially back at Delaware for OSU. Uh, both of which logistically weren't really feasible for me with just with the travel time and uh, just additional expenses and things like that. Um, 
to my friend, well, the husband of the realtor who sold me the house here, um, was a, well, was a private pilot at the time, and him and I started talking, um, and him and I got to, uh, you know, he invited me up, and we went flying for, for a bit, um, really nice guy, and, you know, he continued his, through his training and got through his, you know, instrument and through his commercial and, then he got his CFI, and he is now my instructor. So, um, things kind of fell into place because the airport is now five minutes from me, and up here, it's a lot, we'll just say more economical to fly than it is down at OSU. So, um, everything is kind of falling in place. Um, but I, I started at Bolton I did my solo at Bolton I continued at OSU and I I, I, I want to do the check ride at OSU it's it's a class Delta uh, but it is one of my favorite airports and I do I do know the airspace like the inside of my hand so I'm not I'm not too concerned about OSU being an issue, or um, yeah, or the ATC being an issue. So <clears throat> okay, back to what we were discussing. Um, when we one zero, we just have we have fewer options. But we're gonna try. We'll try it. Uh, depending on the winds, we might try both ways. But we we are gonna focus on runway two eight, and we're gonna focus on a five hundred foot engine failure, engine failure say midfield downwind, um, and engine failure during cruise, and, and we'll see what type of failures we can get X plane to do for us, so we don't have to try and do it ourselves. Real quick, let's talk about getting back to the airport should our engine quit on departure. So, let's see if I can do this here. If we're here, okay. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, it's not a very straight line. So there's our departure leg, okay. Let's say our failure point's right there. We're at that point. We're probably, yeah, we're probably five hundred at that at that failure point. <clears throat> what you need, and I am by no means. I'm 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 a student pilot. And just take don't take this for anything other than what I'm telling you. What I think. Um, this is not education of any sort but to me logically if I that's my failure point you know can I turn around to get to that airport can I do 180 degrees to get to that airport let's think about that can I do 180 degrees to get to that airport I've got no power so we do 180 degrees at a standard rate turn. That's gonna that's gonna take us 60 seconds. That's a minute. 180 degrees. That's, that's a long time, with no power. That's after you realize that your engine has failed and you're in in best glide. But here's the thing. You have to go more than 180 degrees. You have to go 180 degrees, plus 45. So that's 220 degrees just to get back to the runway. Let's think about this for a second. Okay, we all know that as our turn as our bank increases, what else increases? Let's think about this. If, 
if bank is increasing, what else increases? Stall speed. Yeah. Do I think, am I confident enough to get back to that airport when my engine goes out? Absolutely not. Do I even want to think about possibly trying it? I mean, uh, probably absolutely not. I don't know of any scenario that I'd make it back to the airport. Not, not, a, not with a failure at 500 feet. I just, I don't foresee that happening because, you know, if we're, if our stall speed is say, and I'm taking average here for a four person you know, cruiser airplane, you know, if our stall speed is say 49 knots and maybe a 30 degree bank, okay, then we increase that to a 45 degree bank, our stall speed's probably like closer to 65 knots. And then if we increase that to a 60 degree bank, you know, um, your stall speed's probably closer to 80 knots. You know, and then, then if you put it on its wing, you're, you're probably gonna fall out of the sky. That's my thought process. That's um, that that's how I take that, um, and that's why I will probably never um, attempt to make that impossible turn. Um, even when I train for the power off one eighties, the engine is still at idle. It's just which it's. You know, the name itself is misleading for a training exercise as a power off 180, but you still have, you know, some some power. As Dream had just said, um, we practice for the engine being totally out, but usually we'll get partial power, and that's almost absolutely correct. So, um, I've, I've done the power off 180s at idle um, from about 800 AGL midfield um, to get back down to the runway. I've tried it between 800 and 1000. Um, you know, it's worked out both times. Okay, I think that's enough um, discussion about that, but uh, yeah, there's, there's just no way we'll make it, I'd make it back, especially not in a single engine. If we had a twin engine and one of them went out, then yeah, might be able to make something like that happen. Um, so, let's head to the aircraft. Let's see what type of um, failures we can get uh, X-Plane to do for us uh, automatically. It'd be great if we can set it to, like, uh, kill the engine at, you know, 600 AGL or something like that. But I haven't looked at the failure options to see if that's even a possibility so let's head to the plane and let's see if we can do something like that and let's go make our engine quit i'll see you there in just a moment
Hello again, everyone. Welcome aboard, Felicity. Alright. First thing I want to do is take a quick look at X-Plane Failures. It's not an area I've missed around in much. Um, so let's go here. What do I, I want to go to the airplane, customize, failures, engines, failures. Okay. Fail at exact altitude. That's what I want. How about that? It gives us a option here to set AGL. All right, five hundred AGL. Let's make sure that took failure engine. Yep, yeah, looks good. Five hundred. Apply changes. Okay. So as I said, the caveat is uh, we kind of know this is going to happen. I need to, I'd like to be able to make a Lua script or something that can just randomize failures. Pick which failures you want to have, and then just have explain randomize it. Uh, quick walk around. Tires look good. No signs of oil leaks. Let's get our lights on. Right on the right with the strobe. White on the rear. Beacon. Green on the right with the strobe. Taxi and landing lights. Pedo tube is warm to the touch. Let's get our loads off. Baggage door secure. Rudder. Rudder cables. Elevator. Trim tab. All that good stuff. BOR antennas. Ailerons. Heim joints. Fuel caps are installed and streamlined. Alright. I suppose I should have did our weight and balance while we were in here. Okay, you and I on board with our gear. Let's go ahead and fill up both fuel tanks. Total takeoff weight uh, is 2,487 pounds out of 2,550. So we're taking off like I normally would, full fuel. Let's get our plane started up. Okay. Uh, ABR circuit breakers are all in, alternate static air is in. Now uh, let's get scooted up. Avionics are off. Uh, carb heat is off. 
mixture is full rich. The round was slate. Let's get three on the primer. Um, okay, we're f technically we're flying the Sierra to fuel injected. Uh, in reality, I fly a carbureted, so I'll be using the engine primer and carb heat. simply because that's what I would need to do. I've still yet to uh, retrofit me a 172 Foxtrot model for X-Plane 12. I'll get there. Okay, uh, so primer, we'll get probably four on the primer. One, two, That fourth one is always a doozy. Okay, brakes are on. Clear prop. It's clear on the left, looks clear on the right. Master on. Beacon on. And mags to start. Here we go. Do you have engine rotation? Oil pressure is in the green. Oil temperature is coming up. Let's get our taxi light on for safety. And that completes our start checklist. Let's go ahead and connect to the VATSAM network. Simply so that our crashes can be recorded in Batsim history. No, 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 that's not why. Just so I can go in and kind of um, <coughs> see the uh, trail later. I don't think we have any overlying ATC coverage currently in Montreal Center at Unicom. So we will be on that Sam Unicom. Seat belts. Seat belts on. Flaps are up. Let's get our avionics on. And see if we can grab some weather information. Now, if my active sky is working correctly, if it is, I should be able to just push this button. Kilo Mike, November, November, airport information, Lima, two, three, five, three, Zulu, weather, wind, one, eight, seven, at three, visibility, niner, sky condition, one, zero, thousand, four, hundred, scattered, temperature, one, six, dew point, minus, one, altimeter, three, zero, three, one, advise on initial contact, you have information, Lima. Lima. Kilo Mike, November, November, airport information, Lima, two, three, five, three, Zulu, weather, wind, one, eight, seven, at three, visibility, niner, sky condition, one, zero, thousand, four, hundred, scattered, temperature, one, six, dew point, minus, one, altimeter, three, zero, three, one, advise on initial contact, you have information, Lima. Three zero three one Kilo Mike November November Airport Information Lima two three five three Zulu weather wind one eight seven at three visibility niner sky condition one zero thousand four hundred scattered temperature one six dew point minus one altimeter three zero three one advise on initial Alright, so active sky is working. Active sky gives me the closest broadcasting METAR station. Although, in reality, there's no way that I would get Marion's weather. Can you hold on to a pointer pen while flying? Well, I mean, I suppose it depends on who you ask. You know, me, if I'm flying the real plane, I have one hand in my yoke and one hand on the throttle, generally. So I really don't have a hand on my Apple pen. 
I do take it sometimes. Um, okay, three zero three one. Altimeter checks. Puts our field elevation here. All right, trim is set for takeoff. Well, I mean, Mark, there are instances where, yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't have to be super glued to it. I must as well, as I've always been trained, you know, just to kind of keep your hand there. Doesn't mean you can't take your hand off and do whatever it is you need to do. Um, you just kind of, and, and I'm not a CFI, but I'm assuming it's just so you can be ready at the throttle for whatever. Okay, parking brake is uh, going off. Manual brake test. Okay. We got our avionics on, we've got our weather, we set our transponder. Um, no, we don't have our transponder. Okay, our transponder's on. We didn't have to set it for anything. EDSB is tied into our nav lights. Let's get those on. Uh, brakes we just tested. Attitude indicator, turn coordinator, we'll test on the rock. Heading indicator to compass. It's drifted a bit since last night. Alright, looks good, right about there, 186-ish. Winds are 187. So we've got almost a direct crosswind. Let's take a look at the windsock over here. So it is kind of pointing north and south, but it's only like a band and a half there, so it's about three to four. Morro County traffic, November 833 Foxtrot, taxi runway 28 from the ramp, Morro County. was on both. We'll go down here to the threshold and do a run up. Alright. Here we are. At the threshold. We are kind of pointed into the wind, so we can go ahead and do a run-up right here. It is a bit warmer today. Uh, 
So let's make sure we're facing into the wind when we do this run up. Brakes are on, fuel is on both. Trim is set for real for takeoff. Flight controls down on the right, up on the left. Down on the left, up on the right. Elevator, rudder are true and responsive. Okay. Uh, primer is in and locked. Mixture, best power. 1600, here we go. Alright. Left mag, there's a drop. Right mag, there's a drop. Let's hit the carb heat. There's a drop. So to speak, virtually. But not really. My it's a fuel injected model. But all the instruments are in the green. Suction looks good. Oil temperature, oil pressure. Got good fuel flow. Manifold pressure is good. Let's go ahead and idle back and check our throttle friction while we're here. Alright. Here we go. Morro County traffic, November 8033 Fox Trot, taking runway 28 straight out departure of Morro County. Strobes going on. Approaching runway 28. Entered runway 28, 3,400 feet remaining. Alright, here we go. Full power. Rudder for center. Airspeed's coming alive. Let's rotate. Positive rate. Climbing out at VY, 65. Probably should be 70, 65 to 70. My winds were 187. I set my heading bug there for a visual of my wind direction. Alright, I think we're there. Alright, um, alright, I've got a field ahead, looks like. Oh, oh we got some power lines. We might have hit those power lines. sitting inside of a building. We do not have any models. I see a house over there. Let's kind of see where we ended up here. In fact, the most accurate way is just going to be right here. OK. 
Okay. That's where we ended up. I'm assuming that those power lines probably either run right here or I could right there. And actually, let's just hop out of the plane and go see. I'm going to spin us around 180 degrees. And let's just go forward a bit. Okay. And that is... Is that the railroad? Or is that 42? Uh, okay, that's the railroad. Alright, so... Yeah, right, right... Right here was where those power lines were. Now, in the interest of saving time, uh, Dream Dad, you make a point because in the climb out we have a nose up attitude. Alright, so nose nose down. Right when the power cuts out. Okay. Uh let's uh let's try it again. Let's go ahead and reset things. Shut everything down and relocate ourselves. And in an, in an effort to save time, I'm going to just slew us over. Oh, that's not us. Okay, altitude. Let's bring us back home. It's not something I normally do. Actually, we're just gonna put us down at the threshold. All right, good enough. I agree, M. Stein, very well put. And now I need to make a point to fly over them visually because what I saw there were big monstrous like uh, uh, moving like monstrous transformer lines. They weren't like the um, just the wooden poles that I normally see around here. So I am going to check how those actually uh, work or how they look. Alright, let's go to the maintenance report. Um, fix all this, because we need to fix all this. Cause it messed up due to the X plane failure. Fix the tires, okay. Now, let's try this at Alex Caldwell91. Welcome aboard. Thank you for the follow. Let's try this at um, pattern altitude. So I need to be, let's see, uh, pattern altitude here in Monroe County is 2100. And I want it to fail at pattern altitude at midfield. 
So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to kind of hold off 2100. I'll fly maybe 2050 until we get close to midfield. Then we'll go ahead and uh, climb up to 2100 uh, somewhere around there. That's the plan. All right. Let's expedite our start up here. We are in the first hold, so I know there is nobody around. Master Beacon, mixture to rich, and max to start. Right, engine rotation. But what I need to do is adjust those failures. Customize failures, engine failures, engine one fail, always working. We want it to fail at an exact altitude, and we want one. Actually, I'm gonna make it 1,050 AGL. That'll kind of punish me if I climb above pattern altitude. How about that? 1,050 AGL done those changes. Mark, I could. Um, Mark, I very well could, but again, I, I'm trying to be as caught off guard as possible. If I pull the mixture, then I, I know that the failure is coming. And if X-Plane puts it in for me, then uh, it just makes it a bit more challenging for me. Uh, let's get our taxi line on, our nav lights on, and our strobe lights on, so that's why the threshold. Um, so yeah, I would really, um, I'd love to have a lure script just to do it all randomly. I could select what I want to fail, and it would just do it randomly. But it looks like the drawback right now is x -Plane needs to know when to set it to fail. Like, you have to input information in. So there's got to be a way for a Lua script to, you know, do that for you in the background. You just don't know what it's doing. Alright, let's go ahead and take runway 28 again. We're going to stay in the pattern. X-Plane is crashing for you. It's almost kind of funny. Considering we're here crashing in an X-Plane. I guess we technically didn't crash. From what I could tell, Mark, is that this last time, uh, once I hit that 500 threshold, it, it, the engine failed. So the surprise element, I suppose, could be... I just don't have many gauge out co gauge covers. We don't know how high we are. We don't know where our engine's gonna fail now, do we? All right, let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, Morrow County traffic, November 8, zero three three box shot, taking runway two eight left close traffic, Morrow County. trim set for takeoff? No, it is not. Let's get our trim reestablished for takeoff. I think I'll order me some. I can get a couple of sporties, I think. And then I could just black them out. Well, post-it notes might actually be cheaper. You get some post-its and just in them. Might have to look at doing that. And then, uh, I was just, well, in this case, the foggers wouldn't help any because then I would still be able to see the gauges. So, okay, let's go ahead and depart and 
Let's see what happens. Full power. Rudder, I'm gonna have to adjust my uh, rudder curve here on this next one. Rotate. Positive right. Crosswind at about 1800 AGL or 1800 MSL. It's about 700 AGL. Traffic, November E2, three, three, Fox shot, left cross wind, 28 Morrow County. With my left wing, looks clear. Let's go ahead and make our cross wind. Just lose our motor, our engine. Uh, avionics. Okay, let's grab this glide. Can we get down there from here? Uh, can we make a 45 over? Okay, yeah, that went out sooner than I thought. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. We've got best glide in. Can we make one zero? Wind is coming from the south, so it's going to push us a little bit. All right, we are 1,400 feet. We have 300 feet to work with. Start making that turn. If we need to take the grass, we'll hit the grass. Runway. All right. All right. Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's see where we are. Yeah, we made our grass runway. I'd probably never be able to pull anything like that off again. All 
Okay. Let's go ahead and reset things. And all that's going off. And we'll reset our failures. Sparky Pilot, you're tempted to give it a try and do that? I be more than happy to watch your stream when you do that. Okay, let's fix that. Uh, fix that. And we'll fix that. Okay. Engine fire, perhaps. We can set that up. So anyway, but first let's go ahead and get us back over to um, our, well, I guess from here we could even just, uh, we're on the wrong side to taxi. So let's just go ahead and uh, move this. So in the background of X-Plane, um, I run a program called TacView, and what TacView does is it sort of records everything in the background, and what I can do is take that information and kind of go through and review it um, in a more... Um, analytical sort of way and kind of see what airspeeds were and where and when um, when I was going through the pilot training in Batstar that's how they monitor your flight training progress and I found the program to be really really interesting cool All right here we are back at the press hold And let's go ahead and get things started back up, and we'll figure out what type of failure we're going to try and encounter here next. Right, uh, expediting startup, master, beacon, mixture, and mags to start. Clear. Clear left, clear right, clear front. Right, engine rotation is good. Let's get our taxi light on for safety. Get our nav lights on. Get our strobe lights on. ADSB is tied into our nav lights. Let's get our avionics on. Try beats off, cur off currently. Okay. Um. Engine fire in flight, we could try that one. Yeah, let's do that one. Let's set up an engine fire. Oh no, we got one more fa engine failure to do, and then we'll do an engine fire. We need to do an engine failure at cruise. Is that right? That's one more we wanted to do. Alright, let's do that. And let's go in here to customize failures engines failures. We can make the propeller seize. How about that? Engine separation. 
engine flame out, engine fire. Alright, let's do an engine, another engine failure. And we're going to set at an altitude of AGL. So let's just say... Let's just say... Three... Uh, see, if I apply around a thousand... Field elevation is 1100 feet. 2500 HGL is 3600 feet. So let's go 2700-ish. Fifty AGL, huh? Well, a fifty AGL, I can probably set it right back down to the runway. I can almost maybe. Dang it, Mark! Now we're gonna have to try that one. 50. There it is. Alright, here it is. Engine failure at 50 feet AGL. Yes, absolutely tabletop Android. I'm, I'm anxious to try your template. And as well. Okay, let's double check our seat belt here. Okay, um, everything's good to go there. Moore County traffic, November 8th, Fox Foxtrot, taking runway 28, straight out, departure, Elmore County. Avionic failure shortly after rotate. If I did have something fail, I'd rather it be a radio than an engine, that's for certain. Approaching runway two eight. All right, here we are. Full power, rudder. She's so heavy. Well, I don't think our aircraft was quite repaired properly either, though. And we're going to have to deal with this annoying um, sound for a moment. Start a new flight. Well, apparently, I need to start and uh, reload the aircraft. That's annoying. 
Yeah, I don't want to crash this airplane. Yeah. Told me a bunch of stuff not to do. Once it reloads our aircraft. Hopefully I explained it in break. Yep, sure did. All right, I'll have to exit and do a restart. Yeah, that Repa model, it does not like to crash. Okay, once, while I'm in here, I need to make some slight adjustments. Let's try that. Alright, so we're going to load right back up in our home airport. And this time, we are going to Just fix all systems for now and start a new flight. See, realistically, I, I, with that runway, I should have been off the ground, had to have 50 feet, and been able to put right back down on the runway. So I think there was something still going on with the aircraft. Uh, let's go through the maintenance report here. Alright, that looks good there. We've fixed all of our systems in X-Plane. So now we are going to initiate A. <laughs> Engine fire. Huh. Well, I'll have to research that and figure out what set exact time until failure versus set mean time until failure. Mean tells me it might be an average, but I don't know. Right, so we're going to have an engine fire at 3,000 feet. There. 2,000 feet AGL. It's going to be a little over 3,000 feet. Okay. Um, 
apply that change and quickly review. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Engine fire in flight. Make sure it's going to go full lean. The fuel selector is going to go to the off position. And for us, that's going to be this red knob for our emergency fuel cutoff. Um, and then master switch off. Airspeed 120 miles per hour or as needed to extinguish. Land as soon as possible. Okay, let's get started up and let's try that. See what happens. All right, expediting startup. Master beacon. Clear. Clear left and clear right. Mixture rich and max to start. Okay, let's get our taxi light on for visibility. Let's get our nav lights on because that's where our ADSB is tied into. Let's get our avionics on. Let's get our transponder on. But Charlie, we're on Unicom. Reconnect to VATSIM. Okay. Alright. Um, Parking brake off. Heading indicated to compass. And let's roll. Moore County traffic, November 8033 Fox Trot. It's going to be taxiing runway 28 from the ramp, Moore County. Kilo, Mike, November, November, airport information, Papa, zero, zero, five, three, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, sky condition, one, zero, thousand, four, hundred, sky. All right, winter calm. Altimeter is still about the same. Okay, so my night cross country is coming up on Thursday night, going to Bluffton 5, Golf 7. So, let's plan a trip to 5, Golf 7. And the only thing that we know is we're going to have an engine fire. Um, now I forget what altitude I put in. Something along cruise, three thousand, maybe around three thousand feet. I guess we'll find out now. Melvin Leroy, hello my friend. Welcome, welcome. Alright, this is a new flight. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to reload the aircraft, so we are going to do a new run-up. Melvin, I hope you're doing well. Approaching runway 28.
Okay, um... Run up checklist. Brakes are on. Trim is set for takeoff. Flight controls, we know those are good. Mixture's going for best power. Primer's in and locked. 1600, here we go. I really need to work on getting me some um, Twitch emotes for the channel. Left mag, there's a drop. Right mag, there's a bit of a drop. And carpet, there's a virtual drop there. Alright, uh, everything looks good there. Let's get our strobes on, idle back. Moro County traffic, November 8033 Fox Shot, taking runway 28, straight out departure, Moro County. Approaching runway 28. Into runway 28, 3,400 feet remaining. Alright, here we go. Full power. Rudder for center. Airspeed's coming alive. And let's rotate. Positive rate. Let's climb out at 70. We're going to be direct five, 5 Golf 7. Almost 700 AGL. We can probably turn on course at that point. City of Cardington on our left is my first visual checkpoint. Always my first visual checkpoint. Flying out for runway 28. Is three zero three. What happens if I see it on my right? Then either I had a really strong wind pushing me from the north, um, or uh, I'm heading back to the airport. Question. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Yes, I would most certainly call it a day at that point. Absolutely dreaming it. Alright, let's get on course here. Heading 303 is where I want to go. What's that noise? I don't know what that noise is. What is that noise? I 
Is that our engine fire? Yeah, if that's our engine fire, I'm gonna be disappointed. I see no flame. I guess there's a yellow enunciator, huh? For an engine fire. Okay. Alright, we have our best glide in. Alright, where are we? We've got my place to the south. That could be a possibility. We're at 2500. Uh, we got Soltis. It's a closed airport. I don't think we'll make that. want 120? 120? I don't know if I want to do 120, I'm at 2,000 feet. Alright, um, alright, well straight ahead isn't looking good. see a field here. I think I'm going to try and 180 us down into this field. Um, what's the one? Uh, master switch to off. I got rid of that beeping sound. see the flames because the wind was must have been pushing it in the cow. <laughs> Alright, let's see where we're at. Did we hit anything? Did are we on a house? I don't see any models pointed up. Okay, so I did see this house here, although it wasn't modeled. So we kinda came in got an acceptable landing, we noticed the engine fire, we were able to bail out. Okay. One more that I want to try, and that's our um, engine failure in cruise. So, that's what we're going to do. flight here. I'm 
just going to start us right um, at the threshold. No, I'm not. I'm going to start us at the ramp like normal. Start new flight. <laughs> Original Godspeed, hello, welcome. We are practicing some uh, uh, simulated failures, engine out failures, engine fires, that sort of thing. Let's go into the maintenance report and go through here and make sure. Fix that. Okay. And then we're going to go up here into. Uh, failures and fix all systems. Let's go ahead and apply that for now. Then we're going to go back into failures, customize failures. Then we're going to go back up to engines and we can maybe seize our engine. Yeah, that could. It's also a possibility. You, know, you develop a massive oil leak while flying. Um, the engine could possibly see. So that is one failure we could use. Uh, but we know that. Um, I'll tell you what, we're just going to go and use engine failure. That's what we've been using. Fail at exact altitude. And we'll go considering we'd be in cruise thirty five hundred feet. No, let's do forty five hundred feet. Be about more normal for cross country. All right, forty five hundred feet. And so 4,500 feet is what AGL? We're 1,100. So 12, 13, 40, 100. So about 3,400 AGL. Done those changes. Alright, so probably be our last failure for the evening. We'll have to close up. Let's go ahead and uh, expedite and start up here. Master Beacon and throttle quarter. Mixture to rich. Okay, we do have engine rotation. We have pressures in the green. The uh, temperature's coming up. Oh, that was interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe something else failed. Everything's good there. Oh, I didn't want to walk around. Alright, let's try this again. Master, beacon, mixture, max to start. Something's going on there.
toaster, bacon, mixture, max to start. You remember when we shut our fuel off when we would, you know, had the prior thing? It's still down there. Alright, let's try this again. Master, beacon, mixture, max to start. Man, it's amazing what a little fuel would do. Okay, we're going to try this again. We're in Unicom, Transponder on Mode Charlie, Cleveland Approach, Memphis Center. Okay. Park break all. Moore County traffic, November 8th, or 3 Dream Fox Trot, Taxi Runway 28, Moore County. Kilo, Mike, November, November, airport information, Romeo, zero, zero, five, three, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, sky condition, one, zero, thousand, four, hundred, scattered, temperature, one, five, two point, minus, one, altimeter, three, zero, three, two, advise on initial contact, you have information, Romeo, three, zero, three, two, Kilo, Mike, indicated a compass uh, the aegis is coming from active sky active sky for x-plane 12 we're on the latest beta beta 7 My girlfriend is off of work, so this is going to be our last failure. Um, and then we're uh, going to bring it to a close. But I do want to thank everyone that's come in and hung out this evening. It's been kind of a different stream, but <coughs> it's definitely been in enjoyable. So the the key, one of the biggest things that I'm taking away thus far is uh, you know grab that best glide right away, don't delay. Um, you know find you know trim it, grab that best glide. You know that's going to give you the most amount of time. You know I'm trying. I, I, when we were when we lost it, you know um, just after the crosswind turning into the downwind. If uh, you know, if I had been downwind much further, um, don't know if it would have made that grass runway or not. But we wouldn't have made it all the way downwind and then all the way around base and then back to the runway that way. We wouldn't have made that 180. Um, you know, even and if we had to do a 180, if we tried a 180 there. We would have been, you know, past the threshold for one zero, so that wouldn't have worked either. All right, we're 
do another run up real quick. Brakes on. Uh, let's get our lights on here. Make sure it's gonna go rich. And here we go, 1600. Primer's in and locked. Left mag, there's a drop. Right mag, there's a drop. Carpeed. Where's our drop? Okay. Alright. Um, direct to Bluffton, heading of 303, 5 Golf 7. County traffic, November 8033 Fox Hut, taking runway 28 straight out departure of Morrow County. Approaching runway 28. Entered runway 28, 3,400 feet remaining. Here we go, full power. Rudder. Too much rudder. Your speed's coming alive and let's rotate. Positive right. More right rudder. a new spot to mount my headset module holder thing. Eighteen hundred feet, we can go ahead and make a turn on course here, heading three zero three. Cruise altitude is going to be 4,500 feet. curious to see if the rudder trim actually would trim the rudder in the 172 and for some reason it actually is working which makes no sense because you know, there's no rudder trim tab I'm just wondering if rudder trim in X-Plane is actually adjusting the rudder itself so I don't know So we are en route to Bluffton, 5 Golf 7. So that's going to be my next real world flight. And we're going to cruise at an altitude of 4,500. Flying with Mike, hello sir, welcome, thank you, thank you so much for that raid, welcome on in Raiders. You just coming in, we're on our last uh, simulated failure. We're working on engine outs, in-flight engine failures. Uh, 
We done engine failures at 500 feet, engine failure almost midfield in the pattern. We did an engine fire in cruise, and now we're going to do an engine failure in cruise. It was a pleasure to have you. Hope your stream went well. Good, I'm glad to hear that. What were you, what were you doing this evening? That's, where were you flying? A319 uh, to Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. Nice. Well, once again, I do want to thank everyone for coming in and hanging out this evening. Uh, for those who just came over with uh, Flying with Mike, if you are new here, uh, please feel free to go ahead and follow our channel. And for those of, that have not flown with Flying with Mike before, please go ahead and check out his channel. He does a lot of flying when I'm actually on lunch at work, so I kind of lurk in his channel sometimes. What's our current altitude? 4,700? I honestly thought she would have failed by now. Unless it didn't take. I think we got high enough. I think I said it. I think I set the failure point too high. So let's get up to maybe closer to 5,500, like we would be heading back. Okay, let's grab that best glide, which is 70 knots. Uh, so we need to trim for this. Let's trim up. 
We're looking, okay, 70 knots. Um, um, power loss in flight, best glide, all right, we're there. Carp heat on, no wind direction, and winds were calm. Uh, let's see if we can figure out where we're gonna land at. We got Marion just to the north. Marion, Mike, November, November. We'd almost have to kind of circle down though, like we're almost directly on top of Marion. Can we get out and back? Winds are calm, we can take any runway. I think we'll try for Marion. It's gonna be about the probably about the safest bet. Marion traffic, November 8033, Fox truck, maybe about one mile west, we've got an engine failure circling the land, runway 25, Marion. Alright, Marion's a thousand feet, I am 3500 feet, I gotta get over there, let's just get over there. Trying to get myself set up on a downwind. I need to get my butt to the airport. Let's just get to the airport. Alright, um. Carb heat mixtures for rich fuel selectors. Fuel's good. Primer's locked. Uh, masters on, magnetos. Let's try and restart. Negative, no restart. I'm only gonna have one shot of this. I, I need to get a, I need to judge a downwind and a base and a final. Alright, 2600, we're still best glide, we gliding? Alright, we're gliding. Marion traffic, November 33, Fox start, right base 25, emergency landing, Marion. Try and slip down in there. Can I slip with an engine out? Yes. All right, all right. Runway's made. Let's put some flaps in. We gotta slow down. Come on, get, get down there. Get down there. Seventy. It's not gonna be too fast. Short final runway two five. Yeah, no crap. Eighty. Seventy. All right, let's transition. Oh, 
WTF? How don't I get a butter on an engine out? our aircraft, erase our tail number, hurry up and get out of here. No, 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 no. Um, let's go ahead and secure our aircraft. Okay. Sparky pilot? Yes, indeed, we are alive. Master. Okay. We made it. Oh, now we have Indy Center on. Okay, that's enough. T that's all the time that we have. Um, uh, for this evening. So let's head back to the FBO, talk a little bit about what we did. Um, what we may have learned, and then we'll say goodnight. Blue Duck Twitch, um, welcome, and yes, Bat Sim is free, and yes, it does Eat us. Um, um, not all a wall. Uh, it does do some a sauce. Uh, all right. Before I forget, though, I do need to head back in here and fix everything. Fix that. Recharge the battery. Okay. So, so that next time I fly this plane, should be good to go. Fix all that. Alright, I'll see you back at the office. All right. Uh, well, I would like to thank everyone um, for coming in and hanging out and learning and experiencing with me this evening. Um, Blue Duck Twitch, Sparky Pilot 86 makes a very valid point. If you're looking for the most realistic online ATC, um, Albeit for a fee, check out Pilot Edge. Um, 
So real quick, just to recap what we did this evening, um, simulated engine out failures, simulated engine fire. Uh, the first one we set for about 500 AGL and managed to set it down um, decently in a in a field and we'll just we'll just go ahead and I think I've still got it here um, <clears throat> so the first the first you know when I failed at 500 we were able to set down over in here um, it wasn't that bad at all <clears throat> Our next failure occurred right around what I would call, you know, the intersection of left crosswind to left downwind. We lost our engine there. We were not quite at pattern altitude, but we were able to make the jaunt over and at least get it down into the grass. Uh, blue left twitch. This, what you're looking at currently, is not Sky Vector. Um, it is for flight. Um, which is a paid app available uh, for iPhone, iPad, iOS. And I think, th I think that one would have been alright too. Um, We did had a engine fire, simulated engine fire at maybe right around thirty five hundred feet, and I suppose I might need to add myself a an orange flashy light for an engine fire now. Now that I know there's one of those in the plane, I might have to fabricate something up for the simulator. But anyway, there was an engine fire. We couldn't see it. The flames were kind of being pushed to the side, I guess, as we were flying. But it was certainly there. Um, and I think that was even, might have been a successful landing. I mean, I could, with the exception of the 50-foot AGL engine failure uh, by the request of Tabletop Android, I think all of them might have at least we might have at least walked away from there's a very good chance that the airplane might have getting banged up quite a bit but uh, I have good confidence that we probably would have walked away from uh, from all of those failures with the exception of the 50 foot engine out so, um, I think that's it. I do want to thank everyone for coming in and hanging out this evening. Um, the one thing, I, I guess the most important thing that I took away from everything is grab that best glide. Um, first, first and foremost. Um, Sparky Pilot, thank you. I appreciate your um, con uh, continued support of the channel, as always. And can't wait to um, meet you here in, towards the end of June at Flight Sim Expo. Um, speaking of Flight Sim Expo 2023, June 24th, 25th, and 26th at the Lone Star Flight Museum in Houston, Texas. Um, should be a good time. Hopefully I'll be able to you know, put some faces to some names and uh, meet uh, some fellow uh, Twitch streamers and fellow aviation enthusiasts that you know, I've gotten to know over the years. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, grab that, grab that best glide. Let's go over this real quick just one more time because I need to retain it myself. Um, uh, Power loss immediately after takeoff with no restart. We're going to grab that best glide. Um, fuel selector is going to go to off position. Um, mixture to lean. And uh, flaps down when needed. Um, mags to off. 
power loss in flight. I'll tell you what, we'll just do it like this again. Best glide. Oh man. Reflector for Alright, give me just a second here. I think I just lost my uh reflector overlay. Grab this real quick. It should pop right back up. Hi. Probably about five more minutes. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? me just a second properties there it is okay power loss in flight uh, there it is again that best glide car peat's gonna go on notate wind direction which we should always kind of have that in the back of our mind which ways the winds coming from because that's what we we use that wind um, find a landing site Check to make sure fix mixtures for rich and fuel selectors um, where it needs to be. Fuel primers in and locked, and check the magnetos. Make sure masters on. Uh, and try to restart. If we're unable to restart, and if we have the time, okay, there it is again. Best glide. Squawk seventy seven hundred. Declare an emergency on whatever frequency you're on currently. Um, pull the mixture to full lean. If the fuel selector off, secure your seat belt and harness. If uh, you know, um, as if you're picking your landing site, when once you know where it's gonna go, then you can start working your flaps. Um, master and magnetos to the off position, and make sure those doors get unlatched so that you don't get mangled in there. If it were to come to that. Electrical fire in flight. We're going to turn all of our electrical devices off. Um, cabin heat and air to the off position as well. I would imagine that's just to stop circulation of, um, of uh, whatever may be going on in there. You turn, you know, close all that stuff off. That'll keep a, that might help, um, prevent the fire from spreading. Uh, if the fire turns out, turn the master switch on only if it's critical. Open your vents and one device at a time if needed. And then like we discussed at the first part of the stream, um, some circuit breakers can protect more than one device. So use caution when uh, turning the circuit breakers back on, doing one by one until you know which uh, which device is causing <clears throat> or may have caused the short and or electrical fire engine fire in flight that is one of the things we practiced um, and make sure it was the full lean fuel selector went to the off position and then master switched to the off position and then this was kind of a caveat uh, for me to get to 120 miles an hour, I would have had to push that plane all the way forward. And we just didn't really have the... I wasn't comfortable enough with the amount of altitude we had available to push the nose all the way down to gain that airspeed. Uh, engine fire during start. Uh, continue cranking the engine. If we do have a restart, um, we'll run it for a few seconds and shut it down and inspect it. If it does not restart, we'll go ahead and bring our mixture back to lean, set the fuel selector to off. Um, 
open the throttle all the way and continue cranking the engine a few seconds and then turn the mags and master to off and evacuate and extinguish the fire uh, icing which um, we have experienced a couple times in X plane um, pedo heat is going to go on to keep that airspeed alive um, car is going to go on if uh, if your pedo tube freezes over you're going to lose your airspeed indicator if your pedo tube and your static ports freeze over you're going to lose your airspeed indicator your altimeter and your vertical speed indicator so keep that in mind um, cabin heat and defrost to maximum that's to keep the ice from forming on the windscreen and stop that accumulation increase engine speed and do not use flaps to land uh, most likely because uh, ice could possibly disrupt uh, airflow going over the flaps and I'd, it may adversely affect the aircraft I, I don't know logically that's what I'm thinking um, because that or maybe depending on how much ice is on the airfoil if you put those you know if it's iced over and if that if it's clear and it's kind of taking shape of the wing already if you're going to put those flaps in is that going to break that ice up is then is it going to become more of a rime mixed type ice sitting there on your wing because it's now all broken up i'm only speculating i have no idea um, but the rule is you know, i i can i can't tell you why but the rule is um, not recommended for landing that's what i can tell you land faster as needed um, and that's to make again that's to maintain airspeed because ice creates a lot of drag i think that's it um, <laughs> I would like to thank everyone that came in <clears throat> and hung out this evening. Uh, uh, let me just catch up real quick on the chat. I know I miss. I do know that I missed some, but I do want to come in and say thank you, uh, Alex Caldwell, nineteen ninety one. Thank you for the follow earlier. Uh, Flying with Mike. Thank you for that raid um, again. Um, and then uh, Dreamnid came in and M Stein came in. Said hello, Sparky Pilot eighty six. Melvin Leroy, uh, WestJet showed up. Uh, Darpy said hello. Um, hey Drippy was in here earlier for the, the first part. Um, well, he might have still been in here. He just been lurking. Tabletop Android, Mark, um, always a pleasure. Um, hope you enjoyed. I know I missed uh, original Godspeed showed up hello again uh, where is it here okay blue duck twitch um, thank you for the first time chat and coming in and saying hi okay alright if I did miss anyone again I do apologize uh, even the, my little my little chat window thing, it does only go up so far, so it doesn't really keep everything. Um, but as always, it was my pleasure flying with you. I hope you all had a good time. Um, Melvin Leroy, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, when tomorrow tomorrow FAA safety and I, I don't know how many are familiar with the program FAA safety is putting on a seminar about the impossible turn um, so I'm gonna join that tomorrow and then Thursday I am finish, finishing up my uh, nighttime requirements uh, so I'm gonna do a, a nighttime cross-country to um, Bluffton and then to Marion where we just did our this most recent emergency landing was at Marion so we're going to bluff in and then do a couple landings at Marion and then head back to Morrow County and then that'll knock out the uh, the rest of the nighttime requirements um, 
and then get the check ride scheduled and in the interim use the time in between just to kind of build and maintain um, proficiency so okay here it is I started doing a little bit of brief reading on it earlier uh, but it is available online if you're so inclined to go through it um, it's got some good information if you just want to Google the impossible turn it's got some good information about the why's and the why nots and the reasonings behind it um, things like that so feel free to check that out and until our next regularly unscheduled flight I hope you all take care and stay safe and I don't know if we'll be doing anything uh, this weekend coming up, uh, but we might do something tomorrow night. We'll see what we can get into. So, until then, you all take care and stay safe. And as always, my pleasure flying with you. And let's see who we can uh, send you over to for your continued evening and enjoyment. Uh, tell you what, always a pleasure to. Raid Slant Alpha Adventure, so that's what we're going to do. We'll go say hi to Slant Alpha, um, who will also be at Flight Sim Expo this year. So you tell them Tree Fox said hello. You all have a great night, and again, take care and stay safe, and we'll see you next time.